Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and you are tuned into the review of Married at First Sight Season 7, The Reunion. So a little bit of change of scenery as you can see, but still the same great content. I'm going to quickly go over what I thought of The Reunion show. Um, much like Season 7, I really didn't like it. <laughs> You know the reunion show first of all I didn't you know I don't get into the production sometimes I like may mention the production but I kind of get into the relationships of course and um, go from there but the production was very off-putting to me the last few reunions that I've watched um, and I've watched all the seasons with the exception of one and two so the last four seemed a little warmer to me um, so it was the the way that it was set up where the people were coming out one by one and you know with the exception of Danielle and Bobby um, it just it just was so drama filled and it just didn't feel good like it's not even about the fact that you know okay who stayed together who didn't and oh the people who didn't stay together it didn't feel good it, the the beginning of the show did not feel good the production felt very like scripted and you know one person comes out then they talk about their drama then they send them back in and the other person comes out and then now it's both are in the ring and I didn't care for just the layout um, you know I I wish that it was just the experts talking to these um, individuals because they've known them you know so I didn't get the additional host you know I didn't think that that was needed and if if you know they did have someone I thought they could have had somebody else um, you know somebody a little closer to home with the franchise um, and nothing personal with that host I mean it's obviously it's not personal but I just I don't know it just didn't feel good it just felt very uh, scripted and I mean the irony it's scripted reality TV but you know the reunions are a little warmer because we're excited to see where they are and even if they don't make it as we've seen some of them um, you know it just didn't it felt very cold and I'm sitting here looking at the experts like you guys know them like you know and of course we get Pastor Cal and power imparting wisdom and you know the lady sharing as well Dr. Pepper Dr. Jessica but it just from the get-go I really didn't care for the setup so that was kind of that threw me off to begin with so that was one um, two we see that me and Tristan obviously didn't work out we already knew that um, you know they were they were really not meant to be from the beginning and we still see that um, something is completely inauthentic with the way that they show up like none of their stories ever really match up there's always one end of a spectrum and the other end of a spectrum so it went from you know me scrolling on Facebook and seeing an ex and the other story from Mia is he showed me and told her how good she it just they never really really matched up so you know I didn't really waste my time too much with them but it was just once again watching them was like oh god it was uncomfortable because you know it just it was never right to begin with and now we're here again with them so you know obviously I wish them well and I you know I was glad to hear that Mia said she has a lot of self-work um, to do and so does Tristan and we always do that's like ever evolving but I was glad to hear her say that um, she's a bit immature though I mean we always call Tristan out for being immature but she's a bit immature because she just expected marriage to be like fairy tales and lollipops and and you know she was in her early 20s I get how <laughs> that can be misconstrued but I by the time you're at the end of your 20s or 30s you, you at least even without experience are aware of the reality of certain things and the reality of marriage is not always good even when you love that person even when you enjoy your marriage sometimes it's not always good so you know the when she was saying that I was like you know I don't even you know she does have a lot of work to do she has a lot of come to Jesus moments that she needs to have with herself so I was glad to hear her say that um, her and Mia didn't work out I mean her and Tristan didn't work out as we know and you know they're both moving along so that is me and Tristan um, Amber and Dave so Amber is a brunette now <laughs> we saw her with her natural hair color and you know basically they said that after the cameras you know left they were not really able to succeed they got into more arguments and, and Amber really says that she noticed a lot of things within herself that she really wanted to change and she ended up leaving um, she said she moved out Dave's you know um, rendition of, of that story is 
that he didn't know she was moving out and he came back from golfing and she was gone. She didn't deny that when she came back. Um, who knows like what the filming was, but she didn't really deny that. Um, either way, that was really, really wrong. And I think that that shut Dave down. Um, you know, that's just really difficult and it's very hard to come back from that. And I could see how it shut him down. So they are technically still married, but last night we all found out that they are going to move towards getting a divorce. And that was tough to see because you could see that Amber really realized that she shouldn't have done that. I mean, raise your hand if you've done something you shouldn't have done. Even if it was really bad, we can all raise our hands. And she was wanting to work on it and Dave completely shut down. Now here's where I'm frustrated with Dave. I feel like Dave was shut down before. You know, um, Dave was apprehensive the entire season. You know, early on when I was doing the reviews, the friend that they kind of washed over, I knew that that was going to be a problem because he basically said, listen, if I knew you were that girl, you know, that he was talking about, I would have never married you. Like, even after he married her. So I feel like he's always been reserved. I feel like he's always been super judgy. I feel like he was, you know, even when he hit decision day, because that was the one couple that I was like, oh, I'm not really sure if they're going to make it. Um, when they got to decision day and he said yes, I feel like there was a thousand percent apprehension on his part and the way he said it was, you know, I just need more time to figure it out. So the translation, especially if we look at his body language and, you know, how kind of cold he was last night, um, I feel like he probably was just waiting for the other shoe to drop so that he can get himself out, you know, more time to figure this out so that I can just go to what I wanted to do anyways. Um, you know, he was so detached last night, and I don't think he was ever really attached. I think he enjoyed Amber for what he enjoyed about her. She's quirky, she's fun, they had sex every night, as we know, because they kept saying it. Um, but I don't ever think that he was attached to her. So you can see her kind of struggling with the fact that he doesn't want to work on it in any capacity, even though everybody's kind of saying, hey, give it a shot, or work with someone, see if you can get over some things. He vehemently said no. Um, and he got defensive when everybody was kind of telling him to do that and I think people were saying it in an appropriate way He got very defensive and says he feels like he's being attacked or whatever which No, you're not but once again, he he doesn't like to be challenged So you have a room full of people challenging you and now you kind of shut down, but he never said what they were challenging him was um, you know if if this old friend is still such a short you know a sore spot then kind of like reassess what this is really about and maybe you can work on some things and he never said that it wasn't that big of a deal you know so it is a big deal and as people are challenging him he just gets kind of frustrated and you, you can see his, his whole um, affect kind of change and shut down. So I thought he was always that way. Yesterday he was very true to form um, and unfortunately it didn't work out but I think that it's probably for the best because Amber would have had to um, kind of be like belittle herself or shrink to fit what he wanted. Um, and that wouldn't have worked out long term. Um, I think she's, you know, even last night we saw true to form, she's flexible. She was willing to work on it and true to form, he's not. And, you know, people can get to a point where, you know, they have made a decision. But I think with their time frame, only knowing each other eight weeks and then filming this three months, like, it's quick to throw it away. Um, even though she shouldn't have left. So for everybody who's going to comment about that, I think that's 100% wrong. I think that that definitely um, could have been the deciding factor. But we also know that if it wasn't that, it would be something else. If we know Dave as well as we saw his persona, he's not a flexible guy. So, um, you know, I wish them well and I hope they find what they're looking for. So that is Amber and Dave. Danielle and Bobby, I mean, they're happy. They're you know, having a baby, that's super exciting. Um, they're still together, obviously. They're doing very well. Um, I'm not surprised about anything. I'm not even surprised about the baby because when they um, announced it, I thought it was, I immediately flashed back to that moment where Bobby was having lunch with his, mo with his mom, dad, and, and sister, and his, I think it was niece, and they were talking like before decision day, and he was saying, oh, no baby soon, not at all. And we're thinking about two or three years. And 
if you guys remember, his dad was saying, you know, I bet anything you're not going to wait that long. I bet anything it's not going to be two or three years. And both Danielle and Bobby were adamant about, you know, waiting and taking their time. But I think that as life evolves, you know, things happen and you move into a different space sometimes very quickly. You can be in one space in one moment and you don't really foresee you know, so drastically moving into a different space and, and you just welcome that in your life. So I think that's what happened with them. They're happy, they're in love, it's new, it's fresh. It, it, was, a, it was a perfect experience for them. Um, and they're writing that perfection out and they're excited and now they're gonna be on the spinoff, Happily Ever After, which I will be reviewing. I still have not made up my mind about um, Honeymoon Island. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see them evolved. I'm excited to see Danielle um, maybe have a personality um, in the spinoff because I feel like now she can just hopefully be herself and as they're bringing a new life into the world you know things will change and there'll be a lot of things to discuss that may not lie in the perfect you know little world that they have and so we'll really get to be able to see different facets of them and I'm excited for them. I was really happy to see that, you know, they're very happy together as we can see and, you know, it's good to see, you know, we focus so much on the ones that don't work out sometimes, but as of late, because we've had seasons where nobody worked out, all three couples didn't stay together. So as of late, we have, um, you know, seen with like Ashley and Anthony, Jeff Dean and Shawnice, um, and now Danielle and Bobby not only stay together and actually have a great marriage, um, but they're now bringing lives into the world. So I think that though we like to beat this experiment up, I think that it has its place because it's birthed people, literally people <laughs> are now here because of it. So I think that that's really cool. Um, so it was good to really see and it was good to see the others kind of support them in their next chapter of their life. So that's it. You know, let me know what you guys thought. Um, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. And I will see you for the review of Happily Ever After next week. Um, and also for the review for the next season starting in January and possibly Honeymoon Island. We'll see. Not sure. But definitely next week for Happily Ever After. So everyone have a great week. Take care.